Hello friends. In today's class, we are going to talk about SJF with predicted burst time. Welcome here, and uh, we are talking about uh, burst prediction. And in previous lectures, we have seen that the shortage of first first is uh, not implementable. Okay, we cannot implement this. Not implementable, right? So this is the issue with your uh, issue with uh, this shortage of first. Uh, so we are trying to find you know some way where the burst of CPU burst can be predicted. So here one method is the based on the process size, based on the past record burst time. New bursts are predicted for the new records, right? So now here if the previous time the 100 uh, kilobyte process run for let's say 20 nanosecond and a new process arrive with the size 102 kilobyte let's say or maybe a bit more and then also we'll predict that this will also going to run for 20 millisecond. So past record and the burst size will determine that uh, what will be the burst time predicted burst time for the new process. This method is a static method, means uh, we don't consider anything else uh, in this, in predicting, only we consider the, pro, the, the size, process size. Then we have a two different methods for, for this dynamic prediction, and one is static prediction is only on the process size. Here we are dynamically predicting the burst time and among this the first is your simple averaging right so next burst time will be the simple average of its previous burst now here uh, now what what we are doing we are starting to have few notions or notations you can say uh, tau okay t p n Tau is the burst time and this will be a predicted burst time, right? It will be a predicted burst time. T is the, T is the time, uh, T is the actual burst time. Okay, T is the actual burst time that it is running. Uh, PI is for process I, okay? Process index I, process index for i and n is the number of processes number of processes okay so tau n plus 1 is what simple average 1 over n and this part is what nothing but the summation of 1 to n summation of 1 to n Okay, so that is a simple averaging method and I, I don't um, see any confusion in this suppose the first one arrives at uh, 1 uh, actual burst is 1 so for second the burst time will be 1 over n 1 by 2 and it will be 1 only one burst time is there so that will, it will predict it will run for so let's say 0 0.5 time so not a very good uh, estimation I can you can guess over here that uh, that we are only just simply averaging so there is a 3 6 and 7 so the next will be what 16 plus 3 13 13 plus 3 6 uh, 13 uh, 16 divided by 3 around you can say 5.3 right so that way it is uh, the prediction simple average the next one is your exponential averaging okay uh, this is a exponential exponential averaging Okay, and in exponential averaging, uh, we have a T n is the length of the nth CPU burst. Tau n plus one will be our predicted value for the next CPU burst. For alpha is assign what is alpha here? Alpha will assign the relative weight. Okay, alpha will assign a relative weight that how much weight we need to give the T n actual burst time alpha into tn and 1 minus alpha to predicted one okay so when we are predicting n plus one th burst we will give some weightage to actual burst time of n the previous one actual one and some weightage will be given to your uh, tau n predicted one it is something like uh, you can recall if there is a memory and we have a hit ratio and Tc plus 1 minus H 
given to Tc plus Tm, our standard one. So that way. <coughs> the value of Tn contains our most recent information. Right, Tn will contain the most recent information and tau n stores the past history, whether you have predicted it or not. The alpha controls the relative weight of recent and the past history. So alpha will be given weight to the this Tn, the <coughs> recent information and tau n is the past history, that uh, predicted one. So alpha will control this thing. So now if you say that uh, your tau n plus 1 will be equal to alpha times Tn plus 1 minus alpha times tau n, if I take alpha is equal to 0, then Tn will be equal to, sorry, Tn plus 1 will be equal to tau n. So we will just prefer the previous history as we will give the weightage and tau n plus 1 is equal to alpha into Tn, if I take alpha is equal to 1, so this will become 1 multiplied by Tn and this will become 0. So, we will give the actual Tn as a weightage. Okay. So, let me just recall this Tn. What is Tn is contain the most recent information and tau 1 is stored the past history. Okay. So, predicted one. Now, what exactly this equation will look like? So, uh, here in this case is tau n plus 1 is equal to alpha times Tn plus 1 minus alpha times. Uh, here it we, it we have written was tau n. Okay, so there is again tau n. And if I expand this tau n, then what it will be there? Uh, it will be alpha times T of n minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha times tau of n minus 1 that is recent prediction. I will put the value alpha times Tn and there is a 1 minus alpha outside and here it will be alpha times T of n minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha times tau of n minus 1. Correct? So now it will become alpha times Tn but this will become 1 minus alpha into alpha this will become T n minus 1, not it will become 1 minus alpha, 1 minus alpha, uh, T of, sorry, tau of n minus 1. So now this term become alpha T n, this become 1 minus alpha into alpha T of n minus 1, 1 minus alpha into 1 minus alpha T of n minus, tau of n minus 1. Now, if I keep on substituting here uh, and then uh, here uh, this substitution will go on, okay, and for jth value I can say that uh, t or t of j n minus j, okay, so it will be what here I will write here t of uh, n minus j, what should I write here 1 minus alpha, so here you see that 1 minus alpha to the power 1 and n minus 1, if you go expanding this thing then 1 minus alpha to the power 2, similarly here 1 minus alpha to the power j and this will become alpha and so on. Let's talk about the last term over here, uh, last term will be what here in this case uh, something it will be, uh, it will look like uh, tau, uh, tau 1 will be what, it will be alpha times, what should I write here, alpha times t of 0, okay, and plus 1 minus alpha times tau 0, that I will write here, okay, and here uh, for t 0, uh, t, t, uh, uh, like here it will be uh, t, how I will get 0, n minus n, I will get the t is 0. So, here uh, this term will become 1 minus alpha to the power n alpha, like here j is there, n minus n and that will become t 0 and plus this will become 1 minus alpha times t 0. So, this is the equation that it summarizes very well here in this case. And that is the, or you can say the formal derivation. Now, since both alpha and 1 minus alpha are less than and equal to 1, each successive term has less weightage to its predecessor. So, alpha weight is there, then 1 minus alpha into alpha weight, so here it will have a less weight. And this less weight will be continue till we get this, uh, uh, sorry, this will be a tau 0, tau 0. 
okay so do not get confused i may make a mistake while writing tau zero okay so this is the idea that uh, it will give weightage to each one okay not only tn it will give weightage to tn minus one then it will give weight to uh, t of uh, n minus two n minus three and so on okay so that way that way it is huh? i think i have expanded this one i should have right here tau okay this term you verify whether it is correct or not okay i think this term will not be there anyway uh, let's uh, apply this over here so here oh, we have a burst t1 t2 t3 t4 and 4 8 6 7 we have to tau 5 we need to predict with tau 1 is equal to 10 okay we don't have tau 0 tau 1 is equal to 10 so we'll start predicting with the uh, in this case uh, should we start with tau 2 okay tau 2 we start with the tau 2 will be equal to what so tau 2 will be alpha times what should be t1 the actual value and 1 minus alpha times uh, tau 1 alpha is what 0 0.5 and t1 is what t1 is 4 and 1 minus alpha is also 0 0.5 and what is tau 1 tau 1 is given as 10 and that will make tau 2 as what 2 plus 5 that is equal to 7 tau 3 will be equal to what alpha times t2 plus okay uh, fine 1 minus alpha times tau 2 so alpha is 0 0.5 and t2 is what t2 is 8 plus 1 minus alpha is again 0 0.5 tau 2 we have calculated is as 7 so this will become 4 plus 3.5 and that will become 7.5 tau 4 will be equal to 0 0.5 actual t3 what is t3 is 6 plus 0 0.5 tau 3 and that is 7.5 and this will become 3 plus 3.7.6.75 so gradually this value is decreasing and finally tau 5 is equal to 0 0.5 into t4 which is uh, 7 plus 0 0.5 into tau 4 which is 6.75 and that will be 3.5 plus three point three seven five yes and that will make it uh, 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 six point eight seven five. So that is the predicted value. Okay. So this is the dynamic prediction of uh, for SJF. We have seen that uh, static method. We have also seen uh, simple averaging, and this is your exponential averaging, and this is the implementation of it. Okay. So I hope you understand this discussion. Thank you.